Thanks to DevOps Shorts, the show to listen to when your DevOps hurts. And even when you're going strong, it's short and sweet, so come along. Hello and welcome to DevOps Shorts, the show where I invite wonderful human beings to have a lightning fast talk about devs, ops, and other mythical creatures. And uh, this episode actually marks a change in uh, how we do the DevOps Shorts show because uh, now we're more about platforms, we're going with the buzz. Of course, today it's platform engineering everywhere, so we've changed the questions a little bit. And today, uh, to mark this uh, change, I'm very happy to host uh, Henrik with me. Uh, Henrik, give us a few words about yourself. Hi, my name is uh, Henrik Hu. Um, not a good international last name, I know. <laughs> um, I work at Velux, so we make rooftop windows, tilted rooftop windows, and that's basically it. Um, I work in the cloud native platform team. Uh, I worked as a consultant for many years on DevOps and cloud native and all that stuff. Worked with Docker since 2015, 16, and Kubernetes since 16, and done a lot of talks about Kubernetes, introductions to training materials, all that stuff. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So you're a DevOps slash platform veteran, <laughs> one could say. Wonderful. Uh, that means you have a lot of experience and a lot of uh, opinions to answer our questions. And without further ado, let's dive straight in. So uh, the first question is about platforms and it is why do you love platform engineering? So I assume you love platform engineering. So what, what do you love about platforms? What's so special there? What's there to love? and go so yeah so i'm from denmark and uh, the the many aspects that i find interesting but one of them is that in denmark we have a company another company a uh, family company that uh, produces a lot of plastic they're really good at pr producing plastic and you can stick these plastic things together uh, and create a lot of different things uh, it's called lego um and it's a bit the same with platform engineering, right? You have all these tools and you can build platforms to solve specific problems. You can optimize it to your organization and so on. And that's an interesting thing. And I mean, tech is always interesting. I have a background as a system administrator. So it was, it was, um, it was natural for me to go into platform engineering. I actually went into cloud native and that community before I entered the, the DevOps community um, because I was m very much about tech solving problems and only later on I got into all the soft skills and the community of, of DevOps which I really like um, and then the more you work with it you find out that it's actually a lot about people um, in the end and that's um, extremely interesting to me uh, how we can actually help people and how platforms uh, changes a company and can actually change the the flow and the, the speed of which you can deliver value to your end users customers so that's that's the main motivation for me uh, in platform engineering at least okay so so basically yeah, i like the the lego parallel there so basically that, that ability to, to build anything, right? You, know, you have the building blocks and now, now you can uh, actually you know, combine them in all kinds of different way, ways. And that's great. Yeah. That's the, the engineer in you, the creator, the creative part. And yeah. Then, yeah, it allows us to move faster, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, answer accepted. Uh, now, What's the personal thing there? Like, probably what, what I'm looking for is how and why, why did it appeal to you personally? Um, I think I saw that it solved problems. Um, that's what I like about the, the so, so the main difference between the, the cloud native community and the DevOps community is that the cloud native community is very much about code and making software that solves problems. Um, really any sc soft skills or anything in the community 
as in the DevOps community. In DevOps, it's a lot about psychological safety and, and you know, culture, and of course, also automation and, and flow and all these things like system thinking and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, at that time, it was very much about solving a problem. And I saw orchestration and, and containers really solved a problem uh, because I had those problems mm -hmm. that it solved as a system administrator. And the problem um, was could, slowness. Yeah, but also, I mean, you could you could define a server, but call it a container once and then reuse it. And that really inspired me. And uh, that, that was really awesome, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we could actually utilize our service more. We could uh, give the developers a better uh, development platform and stuff like that. Make it more Lego-like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> OK, gotcha. OK, so we have 10 more seconds for this question. And we'll go straight to the next one. And that's a controversial one, right? So, you know, folks on the internet are saying that DevOps is dead now that we have platform engineering. And uh, you already touched upon that. You said uh, the DevOps is more about, you know, people and platform is more about code. Uh, but still, you know, what is it for you? DevOps or platform? Uh, is platform there to replace DevOps or will platform eventually die out while DevOps stays? What's your take on this? So it depends on how you define DevOps. And if you ask 10 people what DevOps means, you'll get 13 or 14 definitions, right? Because it has no definition. I think that was the main point of Patrick Dubois not to define it because he wanted it to be able to evolve. What I try to do for myself is to define it as the body of knowledge that emerges in the DevOps community. So that be DevOps days, uh, the DevOps conference, uh, you know, all those conferences around the topic of DevOps. So in the beginning, it was agile. Oh, developers did agile. Could we do that in ops? And uh, I think the original title was supposed to be agile for system administrators, but Patrick didn't like that. And he changed it to DevOps. Later on, it was about collaboration and silos and all that stuff. And then uh, people started to make these semi-definitions like calm and calms and, and the three ways and all that stuff. But to me, it's more about you know, people coming together and say, hey, there's this new thing called Puppet or Chef Configuration Management or CF Engine. It really solved a problem for us. And they shared this in that community and that became part of the, the knowledge that was shared. And later on, it evolved into you know, new stuff. So if the DevOps community take in platform engineering, uh, team topology, uh, cloud native, then it's part of DevOps, in my definition, at least. Um, so for me, it's DevOps not dead. It's, it, it's a community. So unless the, you know, all the conferences stop and, and won't uh, be rescheduled and, and nobody's talking about DevOps, then, then it'll die. Um, but, but until then, it's alive. And people come together, I think. In, in that funny name and, and talk about solutions and problems and, and it evolves. I, I remember last time I was at DevOps Day, someone asked, so how do you use Terraform? And I said, as little as possible. I, I hate Terraform. Uh, some people love it and that's fine. I don't care. Uh, I just really hate it. I, I, I don't like it. I come from a, a, a place of, with Cloud Native where we use controllers and, and you know, close, uh, control loops and we want to make sure that things keep on being as we defined and Terraform is really terrible at that. Uh, you shoot it once and you hope things stay that way. It's not easy to read or write. I hate it. Um, so, so it's a way to, to, to you know, uh, communicate and, and share experience like that because some people love Terraform and they do a lot of stuff with it, great stuff. But I think the more we talk about cloud native and the problems we solve and you know close control loops, why they matter in the DevOps community, the more it becomes part of DevOps, to me at least. Mm -hmm. So it's all about sharing, just like 
psychological safety is not about uh, you know uh, the early stages of DevOps, what people talked about. It was something that was added because people found out it's really important uh, if you want success and it actually solves a problem in, in organizations. So it's about sharing the best ideas. Um, and so, so, and I think platform engineering is a really good idea. So I hope the community will, will take it in and talk about it and share it. And um, people will, more people will start to use it. But, but it is a very different community. Cloud Native has a community. So CNCF and Linux Foundation, they have these uh, KubeCons uh, conferences where 8,000 people meet. So huge conferences and communities working on it. And we've hit the gong here. Okay, very well, wonderful. And we're going to the next question. Sorry, that the format, right? Uh, and uh, the next one is about uh, future. The future, I like to call myself a software delivery futurist. And uh, I want to see and hear your take on what the future is going to bring for IT in general, for platform engineering, for DevOps. Tell me your wildest dreams, wildest fantasies. We really want to hear what you think. Yeah. Sure. So it's really hard to predict, uh, especially the future, uh, right? Um, but I think me and uh, Ophelia from Danske Bank uh, and a former colleague of mine, we got together and talked about this. And one thing we noticed was that there's this trend over time uh, with cognitive load that, you know, when Agile came, it became really hard for ops because they wanted to release all the time. And then DevOps put pressure back on devs and say, ah, you need to learn An uh, Ansible and Terraform and all this stuff now. So they push it back. Then came, you know, orchestration, you could call it, uh, where we again flipped the cognitive load. So it was really hard for dev, or for ops to install Kubernetes and, and understand this new thing. And now platform engineering is basically doing the opposite thing. Um, so developers get a cluster, you know, hey, you get a cluster, and now you need to maintain it and you need to understand everything in it. And the landscape just exploded. Mm -hmm. So I think the future is developer experience. Um, to me, there are two separate things. So platform engineering is about building the platform or the, the big toolbox where developer experience is a bit like user experience. Like how do we make it the best experience for developers to use this platform? It's not to learn what a network policy is or Kiverno or any of that stuff. They shouldn't need, it shouldn't be necessary. Mm -hmm. So we are creating a developer interface. So just like you go to uh, AWS or AWS or whatever they call it, and you have a CLI and you have a web console, that's your gateway to their system, but you don't see everything behind the scenes. You see what's necessary for you. And we're trying to do the same thing for developers so they can focus on what actually matters to them, solving problems with code, release it and get feedback. And that's the cycle basically. So, so they don't need to, to focus on CICD or how that mechanical thing work, or part of it at least. Uh, they don't need to understand necessarily the mechanics of how to release code to a cluster uh, or how to get it to run with Flux or anything like that. We have built a CLI, one command, and you've released to an environment. We want to do the same uh, changes with CICD. So you can actually run everything that CI runs, you can run on your laptop with one command. That's, uh, that's the goal. And so far it's looking quite good. I think Microsoft is working on Radius or something that kind of does some of this. So I, I, I firmly believe developer experience is the next big thing and we need to understand this and use our uh, system administrator people skills to uh, <laughs> to go into this new field and it's really hard it's extremely difficult because it's not just tech it's about talking to developers understanding developers and and looking at it from a very different perspective uh, maybe learn domain driven design anti corruption layer that fits directly to to this problem. I think we should not let the platform's domain bleed into the developer's domain, and, and it does if they need to use words like replica sets or 
network policies, and that should not be, we shouldn't do that, at least. So that's, that's my take on it. I don't, I'm not super interested in AI, all that stuff. Um, I might be stupid, but uh, it just uses too much power. It uses too much water. It's not um, good. And we're done. AI, too much power, too much water. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Henrik. It was very interesting, very practical stuff. And of course, oh, another one. And uh, uh, of course, developer experience. I also believe that developer experience is king. And it's actually a topic for a whole another discussion about how do you make sure developers are happy with what you're building. Uh, we'll take this offline, I suppose. Thanks for coming. It was wonderful having you. Thank you so much. Short and sweet. Thank you for listening and watch out for new episodes of DevOps Shorts.